please join me in welcoming Tom Bergeron. Thank you. Tell me more about the other celebrities. How, how does it feel to work with these people? You know what it is? I'll tell you something. It, over time, you realize that people are people. And that, you know, you're dealing with people who might be more recognizable. But the real day-to-day -day life, with certain differences in terms of just that recognition factor, et cetera, are really, you know, not any different. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, we'll, we'll be backstage and you'll be talking to well-known actresses who worry about getting the right child care when they're on a movie set or who, who, you know, worry about having enough time to do all the things in their lives, who worry about where the next job is coming from, quite frankly. You know, it's uh, even, even actors and actresses who have uh, really good careers, there's still, you know, there's still another crop coming up behind yeah, them and, right. you know, limited roles. And, and so it's, you realize you're just dealing with a lot of people that are just a bit more familiar, maybe. And one of the nicest lunch hours I ever had was talking to three people. Uh, it was the four of us, me and these three people, about their time working together. And it was Carol Burnett, Harvey Corman, and Tim Conway. And it was this, for me, I'm a student of TV more than a sports fan or anything else. I grew up loving television. And, and so it was, on one hand, it was like, wow, I'm sitting here, I'm talking to these three people about a classic television series. Mm -hmm. But I'm also talking about, to, talking to three people who basically went to work every day, and here's how they did it. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not, it's, it's more normal than you'd think, I guess. Well, uh, the, uh, how is the day-to-day living on the set as while you're there well it's is we, it hectic or is no it no it i i like to pretend organized? it is only to elicit more sympathy but um <laughs> <laughs> but uh right. we it's a pretty well-run ship um we get there uh, on a given day i'll get there about 9 30 or 10 in the morning and uh, the first about half hour before they slather the makeup on and you know all that stuff which increasingly is more important um, you know, you, you're just, you're kibitzing with everybody and, and uh, hanging out and how was your week and all that stuff. Right. They introduce us to the studio audience uh, at about quarter of 11. Uh, and we're on the same stage as Price is Right and Dennis Miller Live. So if you've ever seen that audience, you have a good sense of right. what the size of the audience is. And we tape three shows and we do it pretty much live to tape so that a 30 minute show is done in almost 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and then we run backstage and we change into different tops to make it look like a new day and come back out. <laughs> and we get three shows done by 1.30. And we break for lunch. And usually it's Spago catering lunch, so that, that's not tough to take. And then we do, then there's a new studio audience that comes in. Mm -hmm. And they see the last two shows, which we do starting at 3 o'clock. And we're out by 4.30 or 5. So it's not that tough. Tell me about uh, America's Funniest Home Videos. It actually came about because I was hosting the New England Emmy Awards, and Vin DeBona, who's the executive producer of uh, America's Funniest Videos, was being honored because he's from the Boston market as well years ago. And, uh, and we were sitting at the same table, and it was going pretty well that night, and he told me later his mother had leaned over to him at one point when I was up <laughs> ad-libbing something and said, Hire him. <laughs> all right, so, all right. Sometimes that's all it takes. Is, you, know, <laughs> you get in good with mom. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. And then you're in. Do you pick the videos or? Oh God, no, no. Do? That's oh, much no. too much work. No. <laughs> I basically stroll in. They, what they'll do is they'll send me the tape of the videos they've selected for any given show, along with the first draft script of narration that I go in and tape separately from the hosting part, and I'll make any revisions that I want to make or you know suggestions and such. And then we tape that in about a two-hour, three-hour stint mm -hmm. in a little booth. Then, then we do the hosting part, which we do on a sound stage. And we shot them at the Raleigh Studios across from Paramount, which is a real old studio, which was fun. Well, I was wondering if you ever <laughs> had a time where, you know, he went through a stage for us where you wondered if anything good was going to happen to him or about him or with him. Of course. Yes, yeah. it were. Oh, well, yeah. tell us about it. <laughs> well, I don't remember any stages. Remember South Paris, Maine? Oh, I, I oh. drove away and I was oh, yeah. oh, good. sitting on the step of that sitting rooming yeah. house. Like a rooming house. <laughs> but I always knew you were going to be something. Oh, be somebody, you know. 
Well, Maybe it, not. A... He'll at least have an impressive arrest record. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, I know you were probably a little angry at him at some of the phone calls that he made, though. What do you think? Oh, you yes. Oh, every Sunday afternoon, if we went for a ride, Tom would stay home and he would call. Like on London? The Three Stooges. <laughs> I did. That's right. I called. One time I was in high school and, and they were away, uh, thank God. And uh, I decided to see if Mo Howard and Larry Fine were still alive. So I called, uh, I called Los Angeles Information and I asked, for, <laughs> I asked for listings for Mo Howard and Larry Fine. And, and the operator says, well, we have a bunch of M. Howards, but we only have one Larry Fine. I'll take it because <laughs> it's their phone bill. What do I care? Um, so I call Larry Fine's number and his mother answered. And how old were you, by the way? Uh, I was it was sophomore. Seven yeah. or 15, Probably maybe. sophomore, 15. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Somewhere around there. And his mother answered. I'm thinking, geez, Larry's got to be in his 70s. This can't be right. She goes, oh, you know, a lot of people call thinking it's him. Actually, that Larry Fine lives at the motion picture country home in Woodland Hills. I'll give you the number. <laughs> so I called the motion picture country home and I had a little, remember the little suction cup thing I had that yeah. went into the tape recorder? Yeah. And I, my heart is beating like a jackhammer and I call the motion picture country home and I said, you know, is Larry Fine there? And though not with this voice, I did it with the voice that is still changing, you know, they, is Larry Fine there? <laughs> and the woman says, I'll get him. I mean, this is too easy. And she says, well, actually he's playing poker right now. Can you call back? in about a half hour, and I did. Luckily, they were taking a long ride. <laughs> and I'm talking to Larry, and there was a, he had suffered a stroke. There was a little bit of, yeah. of that affecting his speech, but not a lot. Still recognizable as, you know, the Larry of the Three Stooges, and one of the most magical questions ever asked to me in years and years in broadcasting. At one point, because the conversation was going well, he said, you want Moe's number? Oh, isn't that great? <laughs> it was like, I'm the Holy Grail! <laughs> he gave me Moe's wow. number. I called wow. Moe's house and talked. It was incredible. We so went for a long you, ride that day. Yeah. <laughs> did you figure how much that cost you folks? You, <laughs> well, that was you didn't very, begrudge me that. No, one. You were no not at all. About but that then one. he called Charlie Chaplin or mm -hmm. something. London. Oh, yeah. Actually, Chapel was in Switzerland. Switzerland. Well, oh, well, <laughs> well, 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 <laughs> yeah, Chapel <laughs> lived in Vevey, Switzerland. Is that what you and, called? And, and uh, yeah, I thought it'd be neat to talk to Chaplin because the Stooges were a cakewalk. So we went for another ride. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Why don't you two lovebirds go for a ride? I got stuff to do on your phone. Yeah, you guys had loads of money then. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I had to take up a second job. Yeah, <laughs> pay the phone bill. I know. I'll see you all around town. All right. Thanks, Thank Larry. You. Thank you very much.